are you? At, as you suggested at Bobby's and um, with Varsha's you, best coffee in the Rousey. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've stayed at Bobby's house, but this must be an extension he created later. It's wonderful. Work, a sunroof and everything. Yeah. Uh, the film producer is who we should be. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I'll tell him that. I'll tell him yeah. <laughs> just, just just to create some trouble. <laughs> yeah. Right. So hello. Or anything else? Uh, so Shekhar, I'll more or less uh, stick to the um, format. And I guess, you know, I'll throw a couple of curve balls at you just to test you how alert you are. <laughs> um, I'm watching you very carefully, <laughs> and then if I can't understand what you're saying, I'll, I'll, I'll just make it so confusing that well, the wisdom was all, a lot of what perceived wisdom is what you say people don't understand. That's a wonderful, you know, what badi baat So very exciting to read your translated uh, verse, uh, Mr. Suri. I mean, uh, call the Harper Collins. Uh, yeah, yeah. You actually read it? Yeah. So I just started. In fact, uh, I, I, I have yet to finish, but uh, it's very, very. And Harper Collins being a, you know, sort of, uh, we, we uh, they, they were the friends from the publishing side. So it was uh, good for me to procure that faster and be able to. <laughs> Yeah, I've just committed myself to probably doing two novels on the partition. So really? let's see how that goes. Yeah, again, written by my grandfather. Original stories? Yeah. Original stories? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, you know, my grandfather yeah. was, one part is set in Pakistan, uh, or present day Pakistan, and the other is set in Amritsar. Okay. So it's a two novel sort of set. And, uh, yeah, it'll be good to share note. I I kind of working with Penguin on one of the story which I am being in this industry I have conceived on the migrant uh, story because I come from that part of the world and I've seen many of those real story evolving. So with Penguin I'm mm -hmm. working yeah. on similar. So at some point in time it'll be good to you know share some notes and get some guidance from you. So, so if I may please request uh, all our panelists. First of all, welcome to you all, and if I and thank you for being here with us. And if I can please request Mr. Jha to start off the session. Um, thank you, Gunvina. Uh, Namaskar. On behalf of Fiki, it is an absolute honor to welcome Mr. Sekhar Kapoor, and in conversation with Mr. Sekhar Kapoor, Ambassador Mr. Nabdeep Suri. I thank both of you for gracing us with your presence. Sekhar needs no introduction an absolute te treasure of India, one we all Indians are so proud of. One of the best movie directors and actors India has ever seen. Uh, oh. I decided to do some bit of desk work before I you know, was told to do this session. And I went in terms of uh, looking at some uh, Google search and try doing some research. Uh, and I could find that many of us, uh, the age where I am right now, many of us actually lived through uh, Sekhar's professional journey. And I'll give you some example of that. Uh, uh, Masoom was uh, produced in uh, or directed in 1983. Uh, and the character, uh, the, 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 the child was nine year. 1983, I was also nine year old. Uh, we moved to 1987 when you produced or directed uh, Mr. India, this whole Hawa Hawaii story. I was 13, and it was such a fun to be with Hawa Hawaii song. You know, we've just kind of lived that song uh, through our childhood. Uh, and in 1994, uh, when you decided to do Bandit Quinn, uh, I was in a place which is in the news all the time these days, Jawaharlal Nehru University, uh, when you did this uh, movie. Uh, so we, many of us have actually lived through your journey, uh, Shekhar, as you were doing many of these uh, uh, movies who really award-winning and created such a great story. Uh, when you 
did this whole historical biopic, uh, the international cinema, the Queen Elizabeth, Elizabeth in 1998, I was actually later uh, a few years, I was in uh, University of Cambridge, spending five, six years. So I could relate it to many things which you're actually doing there in Elizabeth. So, you know, in a, in a nutshell, what I'm trying to give you a little bit of uh, flavor that besides being a Delhi boy who I identify you with, uh, you know, because I've done my education in Delhi as well. But when I was doing this research, I could find how just coincidental to see many of these things really lived through. And that's just really been your life. And that's just so apt for the discussion today. Uh, uh, what we uh, what we're doing creativity and art of storytelling. Also, when I actually was doing this research, I stumbled upon this whole TED talk of yours, and and it was very interesting, exciting to hear uh, listen to you. Many of them were actually very similar, and I could relate to when you were talking about those whole the wisdom and the knowledge, uh, uh, and and we did discuss a bit before this, you know, in in an informal introduction session, the whole panic chaos which happens just when you decide to create something, many of the time we experience ourselves that the whole create, create creative process as part of our own, I, we come from publishing industry, the knowledge hub industry, where we see the creative, uh, you know, sort of uh, outcome come in, not in a standard sort of structured place. It comes from something which is extremely unstructured. You know, you are experiencing something which is completely not normal. And therefore you decide to come out with something which is really something very new and something absolutely, uh, 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 you know, in a new in a sense that you could experience a, a new journey of yours. So, in the in in other sort of research, you also gave example of uh, you know how it, how do you do this, decided to get the engagement in the discussion when you were having a discussion about your story, which was your first movie, and the producer took you to one of the financer and and therefore when the discussion did not really get engaged you decided to change the story and that led to making of masoom so i think may, so all of this essentially makes the whole uh, storytelling very very exciting and interesting at fiki under our literary program we have launched an aspirational campaign what we calling as roz ek nayi kahani in this program, what we are celebrating is the language, culture, civilization through the medium of stories. We're looking at culture of different parts of India. We're looking, bringing stories from outside of India. We're taking Indian story outside. That's, that's why we're calling this as a very aspirational set of effort. We have very recently started uh, this and we've done one or two series already in this. And as part of that series, this becomes even better for our audience and for all of us in the creative world to listen to you and get your experience of how do you, what is your reflection of your experience of the past plus what do you suggest for the current generation as we start writing a new story for India. But before I go there, I quickly want to uh, introduce Mr. Suri. Uh, I, I, was, I was sharing with him that I managed to read his uh, translation. I just started reading his translation and I'm, I'm very keen to finish that very fast uh, because it's very exciting and interesting. Uh, Mr. Suri was born uh, in Ludhiana, a seasoned diplomat, made us proud in many countries, last being UAE, a grandson of a famous author, Nanak Singh, a uh, story lover, storyteller. Uh, he recently did a translation of his grandfather's poetry by the name Kuni Vaisakhi. And I am sure he's going to talk and give some bit of his own uh, uh, you know, experience about that. Uh, and I think uh, what we're really looking forward for an engaging and exciting discussion and I'm sure the audience will enjoy it. And we will come back with you if any specific, anything, any question or anything which we want to ask both of you panelists, uh, uh, Shekhar, you. Over to you, Mr. Suri. We can't uh, hear can you. Can somebody tell us please on mute? Uh, Ambassador, you're on mute, please. OK. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Ratnesh. A pleasure to be uh, with the, uh, Vicky and with uh, Shekhar in particular. Uh, I was very pleasantly uh, surprised to see uh, Vicky actually do a session on uh, creative writing and storytelling. I think uh, it's a welcome break from the monotony of COVID-19 and the depressing statistics on the economy uh, to be able to talk about something uh, which is uh, a bit di different and a bit more uplifting, um, hopefully, and then the doom and gloom scenarios that have been coming um, our way. Uh, and so 
congratulations to you for organizing this and for your initiative on Rosik Nai Kahani, um, which I understand is to start uh, to to kick start or to give a boost to the culture of uh, reading, uh, because definitely if you don't read, you can't write very much. Uh, I think there's an integral connection uh, between the two. So if there are any aspirational writers out there. Uh, I think rule number one is read. Um, and and, and, and uh, so we're going to talk about two things today, uh, creative writing and uh, the art of storytelling. Uh, and who better than a master storyteller like Shekhar uh, Kapoor with us. Um, so Shekhar, let me start with the creative writing aspect uh, first. Um, it's a bit of an oxymoron. Um, you know, uh, can you teach creative writing? Uh, many universities are, are running courses on creative writing. Some of these are quite popular. Um, and um, I mean, I get the point that you can teach somebody writing, but can you teach people to be creative? Uh, how does that work? Okay, thanks. Thanks, Nadeep. We've known each other for many years. So I'm sure I will, if I'm just taking our conversations for granted and they leave it up. Um, let me just go back and then I'll answer your question. Rose Kahani? It cannot be true. Har moment take nahi kahani? That is the truth. The truth is that we agar kahani nahi hai, to exception nahi hai. And if my internet goes, just tell me to repeat and I'll repeat because it's a little fluctuating up here in the mountains. Uh, yeah. Uh, kahani nahi hai. We perceive everything through a story. Perception is nothing but a story. I, you can't see it, but in my mind, there's a story already. It's white, it's, it's a wall. If I hadn't a story, I could not perceive it. All right, and I've come to create a writing from there. All perception of all humankind. And so when I'm at MIT, they first asked me, so what, what about, uh, you know, uh, what is the world? I say, it's, it's, a, it's an illusion. It's an illusion of perception. And so, you know, when you see there's a rainbow, everybody has their own rainbow. Our rainbow, hai, but your perception, the rainbow is your perception. It's your story. It's your story. And every moment, there's a new story. Uh, otherwise, how do you perceive anything in this, in this world? Uh, it's the art of all Maybe you would uh, want to switch off your video for a bit um, because you're breaking up. Is that, is that better? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes? Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Um, so cre creativity is the art of humility. It's the art of revealing yourself. It's the art of not being afraid. It's, it's a great act of courage. It's an act of courage because many of us are very comfortable revealing ourselves. So while there might be an ever-changing idea of what stories are and what stories are are fashionable, because you tell a story today, if you say, told the same story 200 years ago, it may not have flown. It is also a fashion. So the creative writing, writing is a technique, but that technique is very much dominated by what is today. And so it's not the same technique what, what was yesterday. So you have to keep up with what is today, but creativity, is vulnerability, it's courage. It's the courage to reveal yourself. And there's no greater story in this world where you don't feel that the author has completely revealed themselves. If you don't reveal it, it's just, it passes off. So creativity is an act of great humility, of great vulnerability. You have to be, have the courage of vulnerability. That's creative writing. Yeah, uh, but, but it, it, it begs the, question, uh, particularly in a country like ours, where you have so much of an emphasis on uh, rote learning in, in our educational system. Uh, and there's often this uh, lament uh, that that rote learning process kills creativity at a fairly uh, early age. So, you know, again, for aspiring writers, I think you make a very important point about humility, about self-discovery. But my question, I guess, again, is how do you actually teach somebody to be writing creatively? How do you uh, teach creative writing? Um, how do you teach somebody to tell, uh, write good poetry? Uh, is that something within you? It is or it isn't? Or is it something that can be 
cultivated with uh, due deliberation. Navdeep, we are all born creative. We are all born spiritual. We are all born as creative beings. Uh, unfortunately, as you rightly said, rote learning, over time we are taught not to be creative. Over time, and this is probably a thing that the British left us with because that's what they needed from us. They did not need creativity from us. They needed a kind of a babudam. You know, that's what they want. Uh, so uh, so it, creativity, teaching creativity is unlearning, teaching people to unlearn because they've learned to protect themselves. They've learned to protect. It's not much different when I work with actors, even when I'm a big actor like Blanchett. Them. My first job with them is to get them to reveal themselves, to be unafraid of revealing themselves, to peel off the onion layers. And that's what you have to teach first. So what are you teaching? You're teaching them rebellion. I forgot to use the word rebellion because rebellion is not such a good word these days in, in, our, in our nation. But rebellion, what we're not teaching people. So the first thing, if I was teaching creative writing, I'd say, why don't you rebel? Rebel. Rebel, because what is creativity? Creativity is a search of that which is not. It's a rejection of what that is. And therefore, when we talk about pedagogy, it's the same thing. Every same thing. Search of what is not. What has not been written before? Not you relate that to who you are. But you have to be vulnerable. You have to be willing to reveal yourself. Consciousness itself is an emotional idea. So the first act of teaching, writing, or any kind of creativity emo is a, an emotional idea. It's an emotional thing that you have to do. Then you get on to the idea of you know, structuring it. How do you structure a story? And then that's story structure always. I mean, you know, the art of today, we have, we're seeing writer, writers don't even complete sentences. They're half sentence, half sentence, half sentence. And that novel suddenly becomes a big hit. You do that 100 years ago, people say, what is this? You know, uh, creative writing is not that different from painting. You know, if you go back to the story of Van Gogh, for example, Van Gogh was minus, and Van Gogh's brother, he was the biggest art dealer, and Van Gogh was starving. So what Van Gogh brothers said to him is, hey, you should be painting what they want. They want gardens. Now watch the gardens he painted. So much violence in his painting. So whichever form you take, say you wanted, so if you wanted to write about a garden, or you wanted to write somebody to write about this, you are, and you bring yourself into it. So teaching creative writing is teaching people and giving them and having faith in themselves, like I do with actors. Don't worry about it. If you go wrong, I'm there. But reveal yourself. Don't worry. If you feel like crying, you cry. Let's cry together. I would sit with her. I would sit with my actors and we'll sob it together. And then they'll start to trust me. And as they start to trust me, they trust to reveal themselves. And if I was running a creative writing class, that's what I would do. I would allow all my class to sob it together, to scream together, to fight together, so that something in them is provoked to reveal themselves. But then we'll get on to structure. Structure is the next thing. And then sometimes the most unstructured thing is the most beautiful thing. The most chaotic thing is the most beautiful thing. So there's no one. You were very moved in your novel because your grandfather was there at Jallianwalabad. That was you, right? Yeah, I, I was actually, was yeah, yeah, I was actually you, going to come down to that. that. Go ahead. Yeah, I was actually going to come down to, come around to that. Um, uh, you know, I was at a book release event for Khuni Visakhi and um, uh, one of the uh, guests in the audience uh, said, you know, I enjoyed reading it and your descriptions and so on. And uh, uh, why don't you um, also write fiction? Um, and I said, well, you know, I don't see myself as a sufficiently creative person to be able to write, uh, imagine stories and write fiction. Um, actually, the only fiction that we used to write was in our reports to government, uh, and that was creative writing sometimes. <laughs> <Right>. uh, <laughs> but but uh, uh, beyond beyond that, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm just a translator of somebody else's work. But it actually gets you thinking that to what extent is translation also an act of creativity uh, or a form of creative creative writing? Because increasingly you coming around to this notion that when you translate poetry or you translate fiction, 
um, it isn't just a translation, but sometimes a transcreation, if you will, uh, from uh, one language and not just one language, but one culture or one milieu. You're trying to transport something into a different culture or milieu. Um, and, uh, you know, so uh, for me, um, I wasn't really much into poetry. And uh, uh, when my uh, mother asked me that, you know, please, why don't you translate Khuni Vasaki, that Jalyanwala Bhagat Centenary is coming up and people should know about the story and so on. I said, I'll give it a shot. And, uh, um, you know, I first started educating myself. Uh, uh, how do you translate poetry? How important is it to maintain that sense of rhyme and rhythm and meter? Um, and uh, I was getting stuck. I wasn't finding the right words to convey the sense that was there in the original, the passion that was there in the original. And at one point, um, I was started getting advice that, look, why don't you uh, use free verse? Uh, because it's more important to convey the sense and meaning and be true to that than to uh, get yourself too bogged down into, uh, into the rhyme of the poem. And I gave it some thought. I looked at how my our esteemed colleague Pavan Varma has translated Gulzar Saab's poetry, for example, which is into free verse. Uh, um, but then, you know, there were these counter arguments. Poetry is meant to be spoken and, uh, and recited. And there's, a, uh, there's an, uh, a cadence to it. And how can you lose that cadence? Uh, and, and, you know, you need to be true to that as well. And uh, if there are constraints that you uh, face because of the vocabulary available to you, then, then so be it. So, you know, you find that at every sentence virtually, uh, you are being forced to make choices of how you're going to translate that particular um, section. Um, and, 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 you know, I just want to give one example because uh, Ratnesh wanted me to speak about uh, the, the, the poem translation. Towards the end of the poem, there's this uh, really interesting section where people, after Jalayamala Bag, the massacre has happened and there's a, the public is distraught and angry. And there are these letters that they write notionally to the Raj, to the uh, British rulers saying, what have you done to us? And in Punjabi, it is uh, that that section is called Chitkiyan Dard Biyan. And I, was trans trying to work it out, letters of anguish. How do I go about it? And how do I do the, what rhymes with anguish? Every first and third line or every second and fourth line should rhyme in the poem. And then one day, um, the penny dropped and I just let aside letters of anguish and I said, postcards of pain. Uh, and, and from postcards of pain, you could have a lot of words that rhyme with pain. And, and it allowed me to maintain the uh, rhythm of the poem and still keep the meaning of the original intact. So I guess there are all of these interesting uh, things that, that, that come up. So uh, I don't know what's your take, uh, Shekhar, how, how creative is the act of translation? Okay. Let me just take up one thing you said, uh, Nati. There is nothing called fiction in this world. If it was fiction, nobody would read it. Fiction seems to employ, a, a, fiction seems to mean to people that it has nothing to do with the writer. It's just creation of fiction. It's not possible. No creative act or no great fiction or no great translation is possible unless it goes through the very soul of the writer. So then how come that I can, I'll write the same fiction? What we have to understand about ourselves is that we are not the same person. Moment to moment, we are different people. There's a million people living inside you right now, Mahathir. There's immense, a vast universe of personalities, a vast universe of identities that are living inside you. Because Pucho, I was trying to, my, my, my daughter was experimenting. Daddy, say, who are you? I'm, I'm Shekhar Kapoor. I'm a dad. I'm a filmmaker. I am this. I am that. I could go on a million times and I have a million identities. Each identity is a story. So I can tell stories by saying, which identity is coming in? And then you give in to an identity emerges. So there's no fiction, even in translation. There's no translation that is effective, that is possible without the one or another identity of the translator, of the writer. And if there isn't, nobody's going to read it because we all have a very similar consciousness. You know, when I, for example, uh, subconscious, all of us, like when I was doing Bandit Queen, I, um, Seema Biswas came to me. She was a very accomplished theater actor. And she asked me all the right questions of the, the, the character, which is Pulandevi. 
And uh, I had no idea how I was going to do the film. No idea at all. And I thought, oh, she thought, oh, but a director has some kush malo because you assume the director knows all. And when people ask me, what is a director's job? Um, so, discovery. And so were you trying? Sorry, hello. Oh, we were just uh, um, Okay. Uh, yeah, Shekhar, you were you were speaking about translation, uh, but uh, momentarily uh, we lost your uh, your your signal. But I'm I'm very encouraged by what you said that uh, uh, you know. You got to put a bit of yourself into it. Yeah, I'm saying, bit of yourself. You can't write. How can you write if you're not putting any bit of your own self in it? And so, all of us at the same time have. Check it. I don't know if you can uh, try and, and sort out. The internet uh, situation because uh, we keep losing uh, chunks of some of the valuable stuff that you're saying. Let me try um, this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but you know, um, uh, just just to continue um, on this process of translation and how the mind works on it. So when I was in this dilemma of free verse versus maintaining the rhyme and rhythm and so on, um, I read this uh, wonderful book by an American uh, poly. It's called uh, Douglas Hofstadter, um, and it, it, it's called um, uh, the Music of Language, uh, and and he takes one poem from one 15th century French poet, um, and gives it to 20 different people, and says, "Here's a line, a poem, very simple, 20 lines about a young man pining for his beloved, um, translated, and there are 20 different versions of that translation." Uh, and there are people who do it in three verse, and there are people who do it in uh, a, a rhythm, and there are people who take one set of liberties with it, and there are those who take another. But for me, uh, the, the defining thing was, uh, he, in one chapter, he takes uh, Pushkin's uh, a very famous uh, work, uh, uh, Onegin, uh, and it's been translated by four accomplished translators, a German, an American, a Brit, a French man. Uh, and, and, and so he takes one section of the long verse, uh, long poem that is uh, that novel, uh, and, and, and takes four different versions of it by four different translators from four different countries at four different points of time, and puts them in a quadrant and says, here's A, B, C, D uh, of the same uh, text. Uh, now, you as reader, pick one and tell us which one, which one you picked, and, and maybe you can try and figure out why you liked version C rather than A, B, or D. But guess what? While four people had translated that paragraph in four different ways, all of them had stayed true to the rhyme and rhythm of uh, uh, Pushkin. Uh, and for me, that was the deciding factor that uh, you know um, you can't you can't sacrifice it. But Shekhar, coming back to you um, uh, and moving on to storytelling, um, we. Um, grew up in Amritsar, uh, going to our little village, Preetnagar, sitting in, in the shadow of our grandfather, uh, whom we affectionately called Bauji, uh, uh, who was then a celebrated uh, a writer and a natural gifted genius of a storyteller. Uh, and, and we'd, as eight, nine year olds, we would sit by his side and uh, every evening and say, Bauji, tell us a story. And so uh, he would start once upon a time. Uh, and, 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 you know, he would weave a yarn in front of us, uh, which would keep us spellbound for an hour, hour and a half. Um, you've done a bit of that. When you are given a challenging theme from a different culture like Elizabeth, how do you go about it? Um, I tell my own story. If you look at Elizabeth again, Every time I tell a story, every character is me. Every character comes from inside me. And then it gets translated by the actor and then the editor into a comprehensive idea. So there is no character that I've ever written, even or made, even Pulan Devi was me. I remember when I was thinking about what it means to get, and I shouldn't, maybe I'll say it, what it means to get raped. 
I actually locked myself up into a room and started to imagine it and started to imagine it. And then I wrote it and then I lost what I wrote. And when I would imagine it, and then when I was filming it, I started to puke. But there were just close-ups and the whole, the whole uh, set suddenly, what's happened to Shaker? Why is he puking? And I, could t I went to my um, DOP, I said, I can't shoot the scene. Because in my mind, I knew it was, because I'd been through it. And I had to now portray it on the screen. So everything, everything that I tell a story, it's my story. It's my story interpreted as Elizabeth, and my story interpreted as Mr. India, my story interpreted as William, young William Shakespeare. So that's what the art of storywriting is, is you. You are the storyteller. Everything is you. You are the storyteller. The other thing about when your father said once upon a time, your grandfather said once upon a time, he immediately caught your imagination. So storytelling is not storytelling. It's story encouraging. If nobody, when they were listening to your story, if they didn't imagine themselves in their story, in your story, nobody would listen. If you're reading a novel or if I'm making a film, if my audience didn't imagine themselves in Elizabeth, as Elizabeth or as one of the other characters, nobody would watch the film. So I keep saying to everybody, we've used the wrong word when we say storytelling. It's encouraging story imagining. So when your grandfather is telling you a story, you're imagining the story. It's not what your grandfather necessarily means. But what was important, you listened and you imagined something else. So when my mother, if she, my grandmother was telling, say she was, say she was narrating you know, Romeo and Juliet to me, let's say, right? And then she would say, and then Romeo did this, and my mind would wander, and then she would back, and then what Juliet, oh yeah, Juliet, Juliet, okay. Now in that wandering, in that wandering, I have touched the whole universe and come back. So I've had my own story in my mind. So the great films, so I'm going to give you what I was trying to, the, the idea of Bandit Queen. When Seema Biswas came to me and said, oh, this is great and this is fantastic. Narrate the high points in this and everything. I had no idea how to make the film at that time. So I said, you know, as we directors always do, when we don't know what to do, we tell the actors, what do you think we should do? And they put the responsibility on somebody else. So I said, Seema, why don't you go back? You write two pages. What do you think? She came back. She wrote two pages. And uh, I immediately knew what to do how to make the film. And I said, Seema, now write two pages about yourself. Contain yourself within two pages. And she said, how can I contain myself in two pages? I said, how can you create any character and contain that character in two pages? That's what you have to do. You just have to suggest what the character might be and allow the audiences to complete the story. So there is no art, there's no painting, there's nothing that ever ends, Nardeep. Your book doesn't end. It goes to the audience and they complete it. Then they narrate the story elsewhere and they complete it. So we talk about Indian storytelling. Mahabharat was what? How many versions of Mahabharat must have been? Millions, right? Before the Gutenberg Press came on and somebody said, let's publish it. And then suddenly said, oh, now we have to limit it. We have to define it. We have to have a three-act structure. No, Mahabharat ki kahani chalti rehti thi, chalti rehti thi, chalti rehti thi. Ab band ho gai hai. And we'll come to that later. Now the internet has opened up that possibility again. That one story is a million stories, is a billion stories. And these billion stories, everybody, so you're never telling a story. You're encouraging the imagining of stories by the listener, the viewer, the reader. If you don't do that, then you don't have a story. So let's I think, take um, hmm? Yeah, you're, 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 you're absolutely right. Because um, I was just... Uh, um, uh, I just finished reading two of my uh, grandfather's um, uh, classic novels that are set at the time of partition. And in fact, the first one was published in February 1948, and the second one was uh, published in uh, September 1948. Uh, and in the second one, which is set in our hometown of Amritsar, um, um, is a character um, who uh, bears an uncanny resemblance to my grandfather. And there are stories uh, that are recited uh, about this young man rescuing two Muslim girls out of a mosque, which is being destroyed by a rampaging uh, mob of uh, Hindus and Sikhs. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, we've heard that story from my father, uh, that my grandfather showed that act of exceptional courage to, to do that. But in this, he casts it uh, in the hands of uh, a, a, a different character. And there's a bit of fiction involved and there's a bit of reality involved. Uh, and, and, and so his storytelling um, uh, goes. Uh, but you know, you were speaking about the Indian tradition, and I think you're on to something really important, that um, when we look at the Mahabharata and Ramayana, we see it 
in the visual form in kalamkari or uh, madhubani uh, paint, paintings we see it in a music form say in uh, tijanbai and the uh, pandavani uh, uh, narrative uh, we see it in kathak and kathakali uh, we see it in uh, 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 art dance music poetry and pure uh, nar narrative and there is something about this that you know um, what you were saying that there is a plurality of imagination uh, and, and how can we limit that into one straight jacket uh, and, and 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 india in particular has such a rich diverse tradition of uh, of, of storytelling uh, that uh, you know we're really spoiled for choice and, and yet somewhere we uh, kind of um, uh, lost our way and uh, maybe with just 200 years of british rule or whatever uh, and we started uh, looking across west rather than to our own uh, uh, heritage do you see that coming back do you see that revival um, you mentioned particularly about uh, uh, technology and i will come to that separately but uh, on the different forms of storytelling and particularly in the indian tradition we lost shaker for a second so um um maybe uh, we'll just wait for uh, him him to uh, come back uh, but, but you know w w really what i was uh, trying to say was uh, take off from shaker's point about the ramayana and the mahabharat uh, and and see the versions that you've got from kashmir all the way to kanyakumari um, telling the same broad story but that's partly because we had such a strong oral tradition and oral traditions allowed the flexibility uh, for interpretation uh, for iterations uh, at different levels uh, um, which you sometimes tend to lose um, when you uh, when you uh, put it down in print but i have to say that the genius of uh, uh, of india uh, is such that even in the print form you have uh, writers who are trying to reimagine uh through different characters uh, you have arshya satar who is trying to uh, imagine ramayan through sita uh, and 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 explain it from an entirely different uh, uh, perspective so shekhar back to you uh, that uh, you know uh, the indian tradition of storytelling in its myriad really forms uh, how do you see that evolving uh, as we go forward you see we understood in india all art is continuous you know full stops nothing ends art does not end storytelling does not end these are artificial ends ki chalo climax kya hai wo climax se aata hai dusri kahani shuru ho jati hai phir aata hai wo dusri kahani shuru ho jati hai and in in for, there are films i mean if we are to take this forward the new form of storytelling in even in ott platforms and if they don't adjust to that they'll fall it's coming now and i've seen all the technology already is going to be immersive storytelling immersive storytelling kya hota hai अब महाभारत बना रहे हैं आप कह रहे हैं यार मुझे तो उस कैरेक्टर में जाना है विद इन दैट प्लेटफॉर्म यू कैन गो इनटू दैट कैरेक्टर एंड देन यू गो एंड द कैरेक्टर एंड देन इट विल गिव यू द ऑपर्चुनिटी अच्छा तो यू कैन मेक योर ओन वर्ल्ड एंड देन यू कैन टेल योर ओन स्टोरी अदर पीपल विल लिसन टू योर स्टोरी दे विल मेक देयर ओन कैरेक्टर इज दिस न्यू नो दैट्स हाउ महाभारत वाज टोल्ड इफ यू इफ आई वाज अ किड लिसनिंग टू माय फादर और माय मदर टेलिंग मी द स्टोरी महाभारत आई एम गोइंग टू माय फ्रेंड्स एंड टेलिंग माय ओन स्टोरी हां but the world they create in their imagination is their world then they'll go narrate that in their own story so i know that question will come that's what we have to get ready for that's the new technology that is already available and now if we are going to take indian storytelling to the world we have that form already our art never ends it's continuous our plays never end well, there's a plot that kind of ends but something keeps going on something keeps going on and this idea of continuing of storytelling is the modern idea of storytelling and that's what has to come if ott platforms don't do that then they will collapse something else will take over it's already coming there is already it's 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 combination of gaming and and storytelling you know but it's a much more uh, sophisticated immersive idea so that's where we have to go because storytelling is not supposed to be a three act structure storytelling does not end your last verse in your book is just the beginning of another verse that was in your mind you said yaar kitab to khatam karni hai let me stop here but what you had already done in your mind was created a million different verses and say ye kab karunga acha dusri kitab likhunga to khatam kya hota hai which art finishes an art a piece of work piece of art is like nature i'm looking at i'm looking at nature the patte hain 
बादल हैं बादल जा रहे हैं इधर उधर वट एंड नथिंग एंड देर इज नो बिगिनिंग एंड नो एंड एंड देन आई कम बैक दैट्स वाई योर ग्रैंड फादर स्टार इज योर वंस अपॉन अ टाइम और विच टाइम इज नॉट सेंग वंस इज नॉट सेंग इसे अच्छा आप कहानी शुरू करते यू नो नो सम हीज पिक्ट अप वंस अपॉन अ टाइम और पूरी कथा शुरू हो गई कथा the idea of story is katha katha kahan sh- khatam hoti hai kahan shuru hoti hai there's no beginning no end there's no nothing there's all the complexity after complexity after complexity where does the complexity come from if the author tries to put in complexity people get confused no it's story imagining that complexity you hand over to the listener to um and and you know uh, you know one of the interesting things that uh, uh, my grandfather used very effectively uh, and, and many of his stories were really uh, about society they were uh, not murder mysteries they were not crime thrillers but yet they were page turners uh, there's a there's a, a, a strong sort of belief in punjabi literature that uh, once you start any of his books you can't put the put them down and there is this thing of phir kya hua aage kya hua and and even if it's a social drama if even if it's a family drama it keeps you uh, glued uh, to keep turning the pages um, uh, and, and i think that that really is the art of the storyteller and in ott platforms today the fact that you can have series 1 and series 2 and series 3 uh, probably gives you that unlimited uh, 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 sort of menu of options of how far do you want to continue with uh, that story evolving characters bringing in new themes into the same storyline uh, until you know try and circle it back to the uh, back, back to the original um and and and, and you know shaker has been doing this program at mit which i don't think many people know about but it really is at the cutting edge of technology uh, in terms of uh, artificial intelligence virtual reality and game. and and how these are going to fundamentally alter at least the way the western storytelling tradition goes which is a more linear uh, uh, tradition and, and perhaps which is more in sync with our pluralistic tradition in any case uh, and, and and the wheels turning a full circle uh, uh, on, on that um i'm waiting for shekhar to uh, I, i know that he's been having internet connections because he's uh, connectivity issues because he's out in the hills and it's there's a storm brewing over there uh, but i i i just wanted to uh, bring in one additional concept uh, and and maybe that's something that shekhar can pick up on or maybe we can take it forward uh, in the q and a session um, but um, you know uh, in his uh, um, man ki baat uh, address a uh, couple of weeks back prime minister modi said something really interesting um he said in gaming why are we using western superheroes and it struck, struck a chord with me uh, that when you look at indian mythology indian stories you know you have a hanuman moving a mountain uh you know you have arjuna you have krishna you have uh, uh, uh weapons uh, uh, that are futuristic um in their in their design and in their uh, destructiveness um we have all sorts of superhero characters that we have lived with for 3000 years and i think uh, uh, for the young uh, creative members at fiki uh, perhaps one of the challenges going forward is um we know that already gaming is a bigger industry than cinema uh and and this is the way it is going uh, so how are you going to uh, weave indian narratives in and take those stories global um i believe that they have uh, an appeal which is universal uh and uh, uh, there isn't a strong enough reason for us to be hooked on to batman and superman which are fairly superficial uh characters compared with the complexity and the uh, depth of the uh, uh, superheroes that uh, uh, we have uh, in our uh, storytelling tradition 
And I don't know, uh, um, while we're waiting for Shekhar to connect, Ratnesh, do you want to come in on that? Or, uh, yeah, so I think uh, I just want to give a, a bit of a, this thing till Shekhar comes in. Uh, you do have uh, Indian uh, characters such as that evolving. So, for example, Chota Bhim uh, yes. is, is a great sort of, uh, for children, it is one of the ones which every children loves to watch. And, and I wonder at some point in time, our own effort of, uh, you know, putting together stories from different parts of the country of different language uh, creates that whole virality, which you're talking about to be able to imagine next stories. In fact, uh, uh, I strongly uh, uh, agree with you, uh, Mr. Suri. In fact, I have an example. Okay, I come from a, a state where Nalanda University, Nalanda, so I went uh, so Sekhar is here now. Uh, so I'm just going to complete quickly. So Nalanda University, I was on the Nalanda University in terms of seeing the past, some of those preserved places, and, and therefore trying to find stories linking. And I, it took a lot of effort for me to connecting that those story. But if you go and walk on the street of Cambridge University in one street, you will have 20 stories. The electron was made here when the guy was sitting here, double helical story of DNA comes in and then you go, go to. So this is how the difference really been. I mean, how do you really bring out the best of that university, which was the first university and therefore, so I think it really lies in everywhere. Uh, over to you. Uh, uh, Shikhar, I was just saying that, uh, you, you know, um, um, as, as, as uh, uh, the gaming industry is taking off so rapidly and it's larger than uh, the film industry, um, how about, uh, you know, the Prime Minister's message of Indian superheroes that can go global? Um, you, you know, the Europe problem Europe. with our... You see that, that we are again looking too much to the West. You say that, okay, we have a superhero who can fly. Are Rajnikanth can fly. <laughs> what are you talking about? You know what I mean? <laughs> so, but uh, Hanuman can fly. Okay, so a uh, superhero flies and lands on a mountain. Are our superhero picks up a mountain. <laughs> our superhero picks up a mountain and flies. So our problem with superheroes, it's a very Western concept superhero. What we should do is, like what Avatar did, you know, is copy from Indian mythology. Our problem is that we look at cinema that does billions of dollars in the West. So we want to make something like that. We should learn a little bit from the Chinese. They don't do that. They tell their own mythology. And then they put in enough production design. They put in enough aura in the whole thing to sell it overseas. Our problem in our films is the lack of production design. It's, it's really very poor. But the world is changing. If you look at the statistics, 90% of the people in the US, especially the young generation, they're not watching Netflix. They're not watching television. They're not watching YouTube if they are, but they're playing games, 90%, right? Now we have to understand what is it about gaming that attracts them. Gaming is also telling a story, but it's telling a story that is putting power in their hands. So when your grandfather was telling you a story, he was allowing you to take the power. He was not telling you a story, take, take, aso, 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 aso. Bete, once upon a time, he got bada raja tha. And it was so vast in his kingdom that he was sitting on one day and he said, if you reach the other place, then you are the king. I'm making it up. He went out, the night came out, the day came out, this came out. What am I doing? I'm giving you enough pauses to start imagining your own story. Now you're already imagining what was it, how was it. I'm putting power in your hands. That's what gaming is doing. So our mythic storytelling is always putting power in the hands of the, of the reader, of the listener, of, of the comic books. Now, they go, little thing like here, they go, uh, Krishnji's mother looked into his mouth and saw the universe. How many times and how many ways can you interpret this? You can interpret this as the Gita. You can interpret it as a great space adventure. We can convert that moment of a child opening its mouth and the mother looking inside, that particles of mud turn into planets. The planets turn into neutrons. The neutrons turn into galaxies. Gal galaxies turn. So look at the vast amount of potential that lies in one little moment in our mythology. We don't take advantage of that. Why? Yeah, we Iron Man, we want Superman. Are you Iron Man and Superman? So they are in. They are gone in our mythology. They've already gone, come and gone. Okay, you know. So we have to embrace our culture, our mythology, and technology. Culture, mythology, technology, and that's how we conquer the world. Because. 
the world will not now belong to national boundaries or borders. The world will belong to hearts and minds. And hearts and minds, Navdeep, as a diplomat, you know, you've done this so often. Go conquer the hearts and minds of the people, right? And we will Straight dissolve out. borders. You know? That's the thing about what we have to do. Conquer the hearts and minds of people by using our stories and mythology. Right? That's what we do. So, yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and you know, uh, uh, before I finish, uh, I want to say that, uh, you know, uh, India's um, soft power, this ability to conquer hearts and minds uh, is, is really, um, um, I have as a diplomat taken uh, shameless advantage of the popularity of Bollywood. Uh, in country after country, uh, we've made uh, uh, the fullest, fullest possible use of it. But take it, take a look at it from a different angle. Um, I've served in the Arab world. I learned the Arabic language, and I never met a young person who had not read a, a, a set of uh, fables, uh, which in Arabic are called Kalila Vadimna, but which are actually a ninth or tenth century translation of the Panchatantra. These are fables from India, and mostly they know that these are fables from India. So in young, impressionable minds in, from Iraq to Morocco, you uh, already have a, 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 a sort of subconscious connect uh, with our uh, uh, tradition of storytelling and the simplicity of the fables and the fact that there is always a, a, a lesson lurking somewhere. Uh, at the back of those uh, those, those fables, uh, in, in terms of ethics or morality or uh, or whatever, uh, and 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 it's it's widely uh, prevalent. Uh, but uh, uh, Shekhar, uh, we have been going on for about forty minutes, forty five minutes, and uh, we want to turn over the uh, floor uh, to the audience. And I know that there is a, a bit of privilege here uh, that Ratnesh wants to uh, kick the uh, Q and A session off, followed by Neeraj and uh, Dilip. So maybe. In that order, Ratnesh, over to you. Yes, yes. Uh, no, I think it's been an exciting discussion. I quickly go to my question, Shekhar, and it's a little bit of different, a little different than the topic itself. So, uh, you know, I, 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 I heard about your whole, you know, the quest of really uh, getting to direct the Pani as a movie. You know, you you felt that just water is a new sort of next uh, uh, space where discussion is going to happen. Now, in the current geopolitical situation, there are many themes such as that is evolving, you know, and particularly in India, you know, which is, you know, post-COVID and COVID time, it's become even more troublesome. Uh, if you do uh, direct a movie uh, for similar to what you've done for Pani, uh, where would and which area would you like to really choose? And given current situation within the world and in India, what is it which you would like to really uh, uh, pick up? pick up as a next direction. Yeah. Listen, Pani is not just about Pani. Yeah. Pani is a story of Pani told from the eyes of Pani, from the point of view of Pani. Usme mythology bhi hai, kuch hai. Pani is a story of a, of a world divided into two as represented by one city, where those that have water, right, are using the scarcity of water to, uh, to hold back and to uh, own the people that don't have water to to and democracy there is a very simple thing now when you get to that you know then you understand how the world operates then and the they, they um, you know then they control the people politically economically and uh, uh, and and emotionally culturally by the scarcity of water so that's why I've said it in the future. I don't know which government will ever be, but it's a metaphor. Pani is a metaphor. In, in my mind, Pani is a metaphor for what's happening in this world. So I'm not scared of telling it. Pani's end is, is the coming of Ganga through Shivaji, uh, Shivji's this thing. So it's mythological also. Jesse Ganga Aiti to wash away the sins. I'm saying the modern sins are the sins of ownership. The, the, the sins of, of, of oppression. So Ganga Ganga. So it's that it's a mythic story of the future, including what is happening to our world and, and now COVID has proved what's happening. So I will still make Pani. But Pani is not just about Pani. Pani is about people, about complex human relationships. It's about oppression. It's about many things, you know. And Sapkoham if I can the idea is that's why it's in the future because the whole production design is mythic. So, you think this is a very mythic story, like all mythology, 
is very deep morality, a very deep moral question and a very deep moral uh, idea in it. That's what storytelling is all about, nahi? I agree. Neeraj? Okay, so uh, again, a very interesting discussion and uh, you know, just, just yeah, taking sorry. from the point that uh, Navdeep made about, uh, you know, India as a country, we, we so much uh, into road learning. So where do we bring in creativity with this uh, whole road learning thing going on? And uh, Shekhar, to your point that, you know, storytelling is, is all about imagination. And if, if that's bringing in creativity, what can we do or how can we bring in this whole thing into the early years of, of students? And I'm no, talking e, very, very early years, you know, when we, when we talk about the first five years of our schooling, what do we do to bring in this whole storytelling and creativity rather than rote learning into the lives of children? Yeah, you all have dealt with children. I saw my daughter when she was five years old or something. You give them a crayon in their hand and they'll tell you a story because everything they do is a story. Yeah. Right? So they'll take a crayon and they'll start writing on your wall. Oh, no, 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 If they are so creative, they are so rebellious because they're constantly curious. They're constantly playful. So I've used the three words, rebelliousness, curiosity, playfulness, right? Rebellious and they're vulnerable and, and, and they are full of wonder. These are the essentials of, of creativity. And if we can keep encouraging people to do that, because you're not teaching them, you're allowing them to discover themselves. And through storytelling is how you and I discover ourselves every day. If we don't tell the story, then we're not. We're the ones who are the ones who are the ones who are the ones who That's my story right now. That's my identity. You and I are talking. That's my story. Right? Now I'm taking coffee. Oh, look, coffee cup. I'm telling a story. It may not, doesn't have to be a three-act structure, but it's a story at the moment. That's how perception arises, by telling a story. When, 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 man, first, uh, when man first looked up uh, at the sky and said, Hey, what is the sky? I don't understand. He didn't tell me. He was very angry. You know, how is it? So, I'll make one statement right now, which is this. So, art is the yearning of ourselves to somehow connect with that that is not finite. Art, in another word, art is the yearning, whether it's storytelling or any other art, is the yearning to find the God within us. Now, God can be described as any other way, anyway, the infinite, the cosmos, everything. I was in Delhi with my parents. Delhi, we were in the People of my age will remember. Surai se pani pite the, chhat me chote sote the, os girti thi. There was no pollution in Delhi, so I used to lie every night and look at the uh, Milky Way. I could see the Milky Way in Delhi skies. Oh, physics me se khaya ja raha tha ki bhaiya koi chiz hai to uska length hai, breadth hai, time hai, ye hai sab mein chhod raha tha physics me. To raat ko main Milky Way dekhta tha, main kehta tha, then I asked my mother, I said, Mom, ye kahan tak jata? Where does this go to? And she said, it goes on forever. Now I said, you forever catch these hoti hai. Jo cheez hum naap nahi sakte, wo kaise ho sakti hai? Because that's what I was being taught in school. That if you cannot measure, it doesn't exist. But how do I measure forever? Baran saal ka Since then, I have been a boy in search of forever. Because as long as I keep trying to yearn forever, I will go on being creative. Kyunki forever to milega nahi. Nahi? So that is all art. All art is an attempt to find the forever in us, the infinite in us. I mean, this is a philosophical idea, but it's very true. And kids understand the concept of forever because they don't question it. I have started questioning it. So we have to take away, we have to make them unlearn. We have to or not teach them to say, if it cannot be measured, it does not exist. Heart cannot be measured. The story cannot be measured. So that's the first thing we have to do and the first thing we have to understand. And if you're 35, 40, 50, 60, 70, if I was teaching creativity, I'll teach it to 70 year olds and I'll say, go back to being a child. Be playful. Look for forever. Look for yearning. Find who you are. Who are you in this cosmos? Go, search for it. And you will be telling stories. Um, Dilip, you have a question? Because I'm getting quite a few from the audience as well. Uh, I would suggest that we do audience questions. I'll come later if there's something pending. All right. 
Um, Shekhar, there's a, there's a question that has just come in from somebody who's in fifth grade and says, I'm fond of reading books and writing my own stories. I want to know that when I think of writing a new story, I have many vague thoughts in my mind. So from which point do I begin? I would suggest begin with your vague thoughts. Let your vague thoughts, because vague thoughts are the greatest art possible. Do you think that Picasso started, what did Picasso start his paintings with? What? A vague thought. Empty canvas in front of you. The first brush is a vague thought. The first lines of a poem is a vague thought. If a poem painting, painting If a poet knew exactly, if you knew exactly what your last words were going to be, you don't know. So just write that vague thought. Let that vague thought provoke the next vague thought and the next vague thought and the next vague thought and you'll have your story. Go for it. Excellent. Um, Rakesh Kumar Mishra wants to know, please tell us script writing as well as storytelling. What should the author keep uh, in mind while structuring this script writing? There's too many theories about script writing right now. I think you should just write a script, right? And think of structuring it later. Well, you have thoughts about Write in what, what is your emotion? What moves you? Right? And as you're writing it, you're writing it, you're, you're telling a story. You're telling your own story. It's like, you must explore yourself. The first response to all my films or my scripts, the films I made, my best films, people read the script and say, Pagal ho gaya? Bandit Queen Pari thi, Logan ka pagal ho gaya. Masoom Pari thi, Ismail na villain hai, pagal ho gaya. Elizabeth Logan ka to pagal ho gaya, to ye film banane wala hai. They are my best friends. Why? Because I did not judge myself. Do not judge yourself. Do not let others judge you. If I had listened to everybody, Basu kaam bantti. Elizabeth kaam bantti. Bandit Queen kaam bantti. But I am a rebellious boy. You know, I've always been like that. I am to banau ga. Jitna log kaenge, galat hai. I to banau ga. Or banau ga. That rebelliousness, inculcate this. Nobody knows yourself better than you. Write it. Then think about it. Then go for it. Just don't judge yourself. How do I structure? What is the structure? What is the professor? What is the film structure? What is the three-act structure? What is the three-act structure? What is the three-act structure? I would define the three-act structure. They don't know how to do it. They don't know how to do it. I used to swim for Delhi State. The best coach I ever had had never entered a swimming pool. You know, so I've always learned from that, that because your teacher cannot write a script doesn't mean that he doesn't understand structure. He's never written a script. He'll never be able to. But he understands how to provoke you, how to turn your mind into structure. It has to be your structure. There are no stories. There are no books. Forget all the books. Throw away all the books. Find your own structure. And then you have a, a, a teacher who allows you to find the structure, not tells you how to find the structure. There's a question from Avlokita Agarwal. Do you think that children watching cartoons is enhancing their creativity or killing it? All my creativity came from comic books. I'm so severely dyslexic. So severely dyslexic. And, I'm, you know, 90% of the most creative people in the world are dyslexic. So I could not read novels. I read comic books. And I found comic books fantastic. I found that they provoked my imagination. I found that I would go home and dream about scenarios because I saw the colors. Every color would provoke me, right? So I think if you like comic books, go for it. Go for it. Don't say, hey, yaar, comic book, you should read a novel. Nothing. Comic books, read. Anything that creates, a, 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 that provokes you, do that. Go for it. There's a technical question from Dr. Ajit Kar. My question is, what is the importance of immersion and familiarity in creative storytelling? You immerse. I'm telling you a story. You are the one that has to immerse. Right? I'm only the provoker. I provoke you. I provoke you in order to let your imagination run wild. So your immersion is what will create the story. So there was a question was about immersion. What was the second one? Familiarity. Yeah. Familiarity is not familiarity because you're telling the story from your own point of view. You're not looking for familiarity. You're discovering yourself. You are becoming through the act of creativity. You're getting familiar with yourself. That's what art is all about. Art is self-discovery, right? 
So this idea of familiarity that I must be familiar with what I'm writing about, forget that. Under se kahin se imagination aa rahi hai, koi dream ho gaya, koi kuch ho gaya. But what should be happening is you are understanding yourself. Aapki kahani aapke under se aa rahi hai aur wo kahani aa rahi hai aapke under se jo aapko pata hi nahi tha ki under baithi hui hai. To phir usme familiarity kya hai? It's self discovery. Art is self discovery. Brinal Oja is asking if you could tell us what are the three or four elements that you would look at for what makes a compelling story and if you've been able to separate a story from the way it's being told like identifying an excellent story behind a botched storytelling um i take it no amount of storytelling skills can turn a dull story into an interesting uh, an interesting one so what are the three or four elements that to you make it a compelling story i'm going to be very harsh in that question forget that forget analysis the moment you do analysis you or your art is left i had to say like, okay if you admire a painter you admire a poet do you think the painter said what are the most three four most compelling things that i have to put in this painting are let it evolve yaar aap likho to sahi aap banao to sahi aap art likho to sahi poetry bolo to sahi gana gao to sahi uske baad aapko pata chal jayega kya compelling hai dusron ki aankhon mein aapko malum pad jayega kya compelling hai I have never fol- followed a rule book ever. If I somebody gave me a rule book on on filmmaking on telling stories, I chuck it out. I throw it away. Then I'm a slave to rules, and I'm saying the first idea of uh, creativity, other than playfulness, is rebellion. Rebellion, rebel against any rule. In that rebellion, you lose yourself. Or when you when you don't know what to do, then you discover what to do. If you know what to do, then you discover what to do. If you know what to do, then you discover what to do. That's why I say when people ask me what are the three most creative words I know, is this I don't know. If you can start everything, every word, every sentence with I don't know, then then intuition kicks in. It's intuition. Your intuition kicks in. But if you already have three this thing, three act, ye wo hai ye, sab rules books hai apke samne, apki intuition kahan gayi? Create your own rule book. Go for it. So I guess you partly answered the next question, which is from Manmohan Chibber. What in the Indian education system needs to be changed or added to inculcate the habit of creative writing in the younger generation? Now I know there's a new educational policy that has just come out, and I think finally there is recognition that we had a somewhat broken system when it came to rote learning and an erosion of creativity, uh, at least uh, in the way that. Uh, school system was working but uh, you have any thoughts for the government on how it does the or society how it should be reformed or should, do you want to leave it to parents uh, uh, to to inculcate that curiosity and, uh, and and creativity but mind you i don't see too many parents encouraging rebellion in kids huh? i'll tell you why because we are obsessed with jobs to mujhse kisi ne pucha i actually read as much as i could and i much as i could understand the government white paper on 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 the you know the new education policy but i loved this idea that educating is about arousing curiosity no it's not about rote learning it's not the things but then somebody came to me and said but we have to educate people for jobs i said panch saal ke baad you put somebody in an engineering college today five years later when that person comes out of engineering college he or she is out of date So what jobs are you talking about? And we, because we have forgotten that we are in a universe and a world right now that is changing on a dime. Everything's changing, changing, changing. What's causing change? Well, is technology, right? So you don't have an education. Our education system is designed to get you a job, a job that will not exist five years from now. It'll be different. It'll be that. That's why when. The Prime Minister keeps talking about AI, and everybody is talking about AI. I'm a push fellow. So let's do AI. We say, "Ah, AI, we say." I'm a push fellow. What is AI? It's not even there. Because they've been told AI. Ah, AI. Okay, AI. We will learn. Hey, Baba. I myself, having gone to MIT and everything, is, is, is trying to understand how do I use AI to tell stories. So, I like the education policy. I think that parents should understand. When I was small, when I was when I did, I was a chartered accountant. Why a chartered accountant? I was. मुझ में क्या आपको दिखता है दैट समबडी वुड हैव सेड यार ये चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट दिस कर रहा है ही इज राइट फॉर चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट सी नो आई वाज अ मिडिल क्लास बॉय हु ऑल व्हाट एल्स वुड आई डू क्योंकि वापस आकर नौकरी करनी थी है ना नौकरी के लिए चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट बनना था शादी अच्छी करनी थी अच्छे घर में शादी होगी चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट होगा वो गाइस वो दिन गए यार छोड़ो 
let's move forward <laughs> this new education policy is great to inculcate a spirit of entrepreneurship because entrepreneurship and creativity are the same thing entrepreneurship is about rebellion entrepreneurship is about taking risk creativity is about taking risk that first little thing brush on the canvas is a huge risk yeah it's a huge adventure adventure so i really like this new education policy i fully support it from what i know i mean they go i'm not a great reader i'm dyslexic but from the outside it looks great okay uh, harsha verma um, is very keen to know how to keep my story interesting for my audience harsha make it interesting for yourself Please first sense. yeah when it's interesting for you trust trust that if you've been honest the audience will find it interesting also but it does change it has to do always with something that is culturally in the air right and if it's not in the air you have to create the world if it's in the air create the world that you want create the world of your dreams and then the audience will probably if you're honest they'll fall into your dreams they'll fall into your story but if you are writing about 200 years ago wo bhi theek hai mai to i i've never made a film about just when i made elizabeth i got into huge trouble because everybody saying me aisa nahi tha wo aisa nahi thi elizabeth aisi nahi thi wo aisa nahi tha wo tu to keh raha hai ki ye jo uske design aisa hona chahiye palaces to aise the to ek din mujhe bada gussa aaya kyunki mujhe samajh nahi sabko malum tha elizabeth ke bare mein mujhe nahi malum tha to ek din sabko maine bulaya maine kaha dekho listen i'm not making a historical i'm making science fiction now give me your production design everything changed the moment you are you making science fiction yeah why because we are telling our own story i turned elizabeth into my own story a modern day story about a woman's fight against gender discrimination it was about the virgin you know they called her the great virgin queen i said she's not a virgin virginity was a political statement maine to indira gandhi ki bhi kahani bata di elizabeth mein Well, you know, you take your own story and you create it, and you just just take any modern theme that affects you. तो मैं क्या फेक करता है? तो मैं किस बात पे गुस्सा आता है? तो मैं इस What are you dreaming about? What that's the important thing about creativity. It's about you, right? Then 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 just write it. Most stories, most art fails because you because you self judge it. Everybody, nobody, अभी तो किसी और ने जज नहीं किया आपने खुद ही जज कर लिया. So forget. leave self judgment alone flow like a river okay now that becomes like a, a statement <laughs> everybody is but i will say flow amit vyas has a question hi shekhar ji thank you for your immense contribution towards indian cinema with epics like mr india bandit queen and masoom to name a few Rams is as good as with that much of a depth of hours that narrate a story even better. Do you see any possibility of finding the OTT route? Okay, can you hear me? Just raise your hand because yeah. I'm okay. Can you repeat the question? Because I lost lost you for two minutes for two. Okay, like the, the the relevant part is the. audience has been waiting for pani for 10 years now that ott has taken off with great production quality uh, and the uh, uh, hours to give the depth to the story do you see pani being made as an on an ott platform absolutely yes i do although uh, sometimes ott platforms they give you too much space and you become indisciplined as a storyteller why do i say that because the great art of storytelling in a short form is to to weave within it subtext ki aap ek scene kar rahe ho do dialogue hain dun do dialogue ke beech mein ek puri kahani hai ye dialogue hai there's little space dusra dialogue hai that's what poetry is good about na that's what's so great about poetry within each line there's a contradiction you create contradictions within each line and in that contradiction there's another story but that's what i find on the ott platforms everybody just tells a story there are no contradictions we must have contradictions so i like the discipline of making a movie and telling 25 stories 200 stories within the same movie because you create spaces for contradictions so every time you come back to see the same if you see masoom when you were a kid and you see masoom now when you're 20 years old or 30 years old 40 years old you will find a different story why because the film gives you that space and you're a different person so you interpret the story differently so 
unfortunately uh, platforms take that discipline away but yes i don't think theatrical is coming back for a long time so i will try and keep the same discipline and tell it on an ott platform so uh, professor shailendra raj mehta ji se ek bada acha sawal aaya shekhar um hum apne bachchon ko apni bhashaon ke nazdeek kaise le jaye uh, reading kabir or nanak in english is not reading them at all sahi hai kyunki har bhasha ki rhythm hota hai आप कहो कि जो हमारे पुराने मंत्र थे है ना उनको हम इंग्लिश में ट्रांसलेट करेंगे और वही हम आपको सुना देंगे राइट वो तो द इंटोनेशन द रिदम द लिल्ट ऑफ लैंग्वेज टेल्स इट्स ओन स्टोरी दैट्स द इशू दैट्स व्हाट यू फाइंड इन ट्रांसलेशन दैट्स व्हाट्स डिफिकल्ट यू नो द लिल्ट एंड द इंटोनेशन इज इम्पॉर्टेंट टू द स्टोरी दैट इज बींग टोल्ड बिकॉज इट इज टेलिंग सेवरल स्टोरीज एट द सेम टाइम so bahut it's very essential that we bring our kids back from only the english medium to our own bhasha to yaar uh, i want to listen to a mantra sunta hu to ek i had an experiment a japanese scientist wired me up from youtube to uh, a mantra par aap ke mantra bole aaya ke to mujhe malum hai mantra now he wired me up and then he made me listen to the youtube and i could see my brain front and i'm listening to the mantra and i can see my brain different अब मुझे समझ में नहीं आ रहा क्या बोल रहे हैं लेकिन वो जो लिल्ट है उसका जो अपना इंटोनेशन है उसकी जो म्यूजिकलिटी है इट्स चेंजिंग माय माय ब्रेन रिदम्स बट नाउ इफ आई अंडरस्टूड द संस्कृत ऑफ इट इफ आई अंडरस्टूड एग्जैक्टली व्हाट इट मींस इट वुड हैव अ डीपर डीपर इफेक्ट ऑन मी इट्स लाइक यू नो तो अपने सिर्फ लैंग्वेज ही के नहीं अपनी क्लासिकल म्यूजिक की बिकॉज़ आवर ट्रेडिशनल मैथ्स इज एनकंपस्ड इन आवर म्यूजिक the rhythms of our music the ancient the original music is mathematics so like so bhasha hi nahi sab kuch sab kuch we need to rediscover the ancient indian paradigm of storytelling of music of art and understand why it was so deep and so what we've been teaching our our, our children is the jaldi jaldi kar do yaar ye ye le lo ye le lo iska kuch bana do that's rote learning you know we need to go back go back and allow ourselves to fall into our culture so um kyunki professor mehta aapka sawal jo tha shekhar ke liye bhi tha aur mere liye bhi tha so uh, let me also give my two bits uh, on 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 your question i think that original language ek do aani badi zaruri hai agar meri matra bhasha punjabi hai so that's a language that i understand well lekin we shouldn't uh, also try to be stuck in just one language uh, and i say this uh, with the benefit of having served say in washington for four years uh, and and the americans if one can generalize are a very monolinguistic uh, culture um, and, and and there is a sense in america that by not getting themselves exposed to different languages uh, perhaps they they lose out on on some things that the europeans have who are more multilingual more multi uh, cultural than the uh, than think uh, i think we lost navdeep yeah. so yeah shekhar would you like to uh, complete the sentence or uh... well i think i answered the question that navdeep yeah. was also translating that so let's take on another question and navdeep can come back and then take off from where he was oh uh, so mr question? kapoor uh, there is uh, this is ishan from fikki one impo- uh, very interesting question which has come up is that can you please share about your daily discipline you maintain for writing See I'm not a writer I've always worked with writers and I have no discipline unless somebody else is disciplined with me my only discipline is in the morning I get up and I I I challenge myself every day every day and it may not be about the script may not be I wake up in the morning and I sit and I'm alone and I challenge myself are you shaker you thought that why is that short right why is it wrong why is that so the daily challenge to my own belief system and the own my assumptions is a very very important part of my creativity and it doesn't matter what you challenge 
Whatever your challenge somehow goes into your writing. Whoever you are somehow goes into writing. But that doesn't answer your question. No, I'm not a disciplined writer. I have friends like uh, Amish Tripathi and I were just talking about doing something together. And I said, Amish, you'll have to get used to one thing. I will be calling you at five in the morning, six in the morning, but I will not be sitting with you writing. You know, I'm not a writer. I, 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 I work much better in conflict with other people. I am a, I, that's why I like directing. That's why I like editing. I like to be in conflict with other people. And in that conflict, conflict, people say, why conflict all the time? The earth is constantly in conflict with the sun. One is pulling, one is pushing. So that kind of creative conflict, I really enjoy. So I like working with writers. I may contribute a lot, but I like to have somebody there to be in conflict with, or I need to narrate to somebody. I'm a narrator. I'm not a writer. So there's a question from uh, Kumai Ruchi, uh, Mr. Kapoor. Uh, mm -hmm. She's asking, what kind of books that you ca that comes into your mind when you think about aesthetic pleasure or discovering oneself? I read. Uh, I never read linear. Um, I always read two pages Sometimes I start a book from the end and then I go back uh, because I'm not a linear person. I don't look at life. I don't look at time in a linear way. I don't think. I think time is just uh, an imagination, a construct of the human mind. So. I never, even a novel, I will read, even Harry Potter, I'll read. Achha, once a chapter per day, a chapter per day, because I love the idea of trying to connect it before the author has connected it for me. What I then the author meant that. I, I missed that connection. And it's a fantastic thing. So I'll read any book, any book, whether it's a book on spirituality, whether it's Stephen Hawking's uh, books on time or whether it's a, it's a book on quantum physics or whether it's Harry Potter. My Hindi reading speeds, unfortunately, are not that great. So I prefer to read in English, but I will read in Hindi wherever I can. Sunta I prefer listening in Hindi. Or Hindi mein bolna bada acha lagta hai. Lekin, uh, I don't read very well in Hindi. So I read normally read English. Um, I'm sorry, I had a little power outage, but uh, the backup plan has kicked in. So I'm back. Um, but uh, um, uh, I, I'm mindful that uh, uh, it would be unfair if we didn't give Dilip uh, the opportunity as Secretary General to pose uh, his questions. So, Dilip? No, no, no. I, I, I'm going to, uh, I, I normally don't want to ask the question, but seeing Shaker's frame, I want to know, you know, you were sitting there earlier and you pointed to the wall, but what is the story? Normally, shoes are put on the floor. What is the story of shoes hanging on a peg behind your head? Because uh, I'm with uh, uh, one of my very, very favorite cousins, and she's an artist. So uh, actually, I call her house Stumble Upon because I'm constantly stumbling on. And it's very interesting. Her whole house is a story of her life. So everywhere I'm finding things, that provokes something. So it's a, it's a, what I'm, I am in, in a house, uh, which we had time to show you. We are in a house, which is a story of this artist's life. So everything's there, you know, right from the time when she was 10 years old to now when she's in her sixties. So it's a story of her life, the houses. Thank you. Um, Dilip, uh, Dilip, you're muted. Uh, Dilip, you're muted. Yeah, sorry, I was just going to say, uh, Dilip, you know, the story could be anything. Yes. You, know, you could reinterpret the story in your way. It's not necessary to have shoes on the floor. It could be anywhere. But yeah. you know, look, looking at you, you know, earlier, you talked about your interpretation of Elizabeth and, you know, other things. How, how do we, there's so many regional stories, so many untranslated manuscripts in India, so many hidden things, which we can become once upon a time, you know. How do we actually get that and how can we, you know, we, we can actually increase this uh, storytelling so that, you know, we can just flood the world with Indian uh, stories. Yeah. Dilip, I'm glad you asked me this question about two, three, three years ago. Two years ago, I was the head of the Indian Film Awards, you know, the big awards. And I found behind the spotlight of Bollywood, which tends to become, yeah, the Bollywood with Aisa Otada, surname in Otada. Miss Seema Otada. Miss Seema Khan. Who doesn't know who is. Mr. Ashok. Now, Mr. Ashok Kapoor said, what will happen to Punjabi? 
अरे मिस्टर अशोक सुबर मैम ने बोला अरे वो तो साउथ इंडियन हो जाएगा दे कॉन्स्टेंटली ट्राई टू टेल स्टोरीज दैट वर नॉट रूटेड एंड देन बिहाइंड दिस बिग ग्लेट्स एंड ग्लैमर ऑफ बॉलीवुड I saw so many regional films. I call them regional because they're not Hindi. It's not the right word. Non-Hindi films. I was stunned at the storytelling. I was stunned how moved I was. I was stunned at how many stories there were. And I asked myself, "Asa kyun lag raha hai mujhe?" Because they were rooted. वो किसी के root से आए थे. Bollywood में जो हम सारे करते देखते हैं, वो किसी का root नहीं था. वो Miss Seema था, हाँ, Mr. Arun था. वो अरुण सुब्रमण्यम नहीं था अरुण कपूर भी नहीं था सीमा मल्होत्रा भी नहीं थी वो सीमा विश्वास भी नहीं थी सो देर आर अलियन स्टोरीज एक्चुअली बिंग फील्ड एंड बिंग टोल्ड दैट आर नेवर नोटिस्ड हैव नॉट कम आउट लोग देखते नहीं है क्योंकि उनको रिलीज नहीं मिलती है तो वन ऑफ द थिंग्स आप कॉन्स्टेंटली सेंग इज ब्रिंग दी स्टोरीज फॉरवर्ड या इनको आगे लाओ डोंट लेट दी द्लिट्स एंड ग्लैमर ऑफ बॉलीवुड हाइड ऑल दैटिक टैलेंट बोथ स्टोरी टेलिंग एंड फिल्म मेकिंग दैट वी है that is hiding yeah, yeah. So, and, so there are many <laughs> there are many corporate people on this call right yeah so how can we actually take this idea of creative writing and storing uh, storytelling into communication <laughs> a within the organization and communication of the organization internally externally you know we have this institution called ftii really? and can you hear me yeah can you hear me i can yeah. hear you i can hear you, can hear you. <laughs> we have this institution called ftii and i've always been wondered why corporations are not contributing to that i've always wondered why corporations don't come there i wonder why corporations don't uh, you know induce this kind of seminar there and and help it on or or provoke it i always wondered why ftii and uh, iits are not connected for technology i think that what we need is one i mean and i'm just saying because ftii exists i think there needs to be one source in which everybody puts in their contribu- their, their their ideas there needs to be one source where all the corporates come and say this is interesting and out of that creative will flow out of that i'm i'm saying that even some corporates will say yeah i don't want to do this job i want to tell stories because they are influenced by that you know what i mean i i think that we need one big organization maybe fiki can do it like you're doing it now but make it a, a, a make it an organization in which story writers can come and study and contribute and corporations can come and study and contribute it doesn't matter you might be the ceo of a company of a billion or trillion dollar company you can still come and understand that you're a story writer you know and you can learn and and you can that and that we should not be making this distinction ye corporate hai ye art hai ye wo hai i think that time has gone really i think the time of silos has gone the the new technology and the way new i mean new entrepreneurship is actually from left and right brain is far from far of you and that's why i think that you know um that's why san francisco grows so well is because there are so many different brains from so many different disciplines that sit in the same coffee shop you can go from one conversation to another conversation to another conversation and the idea of art influences the idea of creativity the idea of art because all art and storytelling is the search of that which is not and so is technology is a search of that which is not is the uh, the push is to search for that which is not and take everything forward so i think that maybe fiki can do that we, you can have an organization a worldwide organization which is based on traditional indian art and traditional indian storytelling in which uh, all organizations come in and 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 read. i've never met a head of a corporation who doesn't want to talk about storytelling or doesn't want to write poetry it doesn't matter who where how it's just because they discover that actually that's why i am i'm an artist who is not an artist who is not a storyteller when i so i go back to the first statement i made uh, was that our our existence is the story we tell ourselves that's who we are because all perception it might be a one minute story one second story two hour story but story is a kahani hai my relationship with everything outside me and myself is a story aur kya hai kahani hai oh meri kahani hai और सब वो जो कॉर्पोरेशन का ट्रिलियन डॉलर कॉर्पोरेशन का है वो उसकी कहानी है उसको बैठाओ हम कहानी उसको सुनाते हैं वो वापस सुनाएगा ऐसी तो मेल होगा यार इस दैट मेल दैट 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 आइडिया ऑफ नॉट सेइंग यू लेट्स गो हाउ कैन वी गेट कॉर्पोरेट वी आर ऑल द सेम सो लेट्स डेवलप एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन 
you can do it, Vicky can do it, is where everybody comes and sits at the same coffee table, drinks the same coffee, has the same similar conversations. Every bit, everybody benefits. Everybody learns. Everybody aspires. Everybody yearns. Because all everything is about yearning. What is not yearning? If there's no yearning, there's no life. <laughs> and I'm, I, I'm mindful that uh, we are um, approaching the end of this uh, fascinating uh, conversation and some uh, absolutely wonderful insights from uh, Shekhar. Um, so um, let me um, close and hand over uh, the floor to Neeraj Jain, the co-chair uh, at Fiki, uh, for uh, bringing this uh, conversation and this masterclass to an end. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Navdeep. Uh, I think uh, if there was one session I didn't want it to end, it would have been this one. Uh, I think we could have gone gone on, I think, for the next couple of hours and we would have been mesmerized by, by what, uh, Navdeep, you had to share from your perspective and what Shekhar had to share from his perspective. I could relate to some part of it completely. Uh, I would start by getting back to uh, what Mrs. Chinoy said uh, about corporate world and how can we bring them together on storytelling. And, and this reminds me of one thing that I always say in my organization is, you know, at the end of the day in corporate world also, what do we do? We actually do storytelling. And especially at the positions that we guys sit on, you know, we do different kind of storytelling to different kind of audience. When we meet our employees, we do a different kind of storytelling. And when we sit down across and, and are addressing the board members, it's a different storytelling. And when we go to our, uh, you know, consumers and customers, there's a different kind of storytelling. So it's, it's all about storytelling. And I could relate to when Shekhar said that, you know, what is storytelling? It's different stories that we've lived through in our lives. And, and those are all stories. Uh, but one thing I should compliment uh, you, Shekhar, on is uh, the fact that, you know, everybody used to say that, you know, there's a lot of creativity that storytelling brings. But the way you brought it out by bringing that very simple point that storytelling is not storytelling, it's story imagining is what brings to the fore that, you know, why does it bring so much of creativity? It brings so much of creativity because everybody is imagining their whole story in their own perspective. And that's the art of storytelling. And, uh, and, and that's what makes the difference. Also, one thing I would say is, uh, it was an interesting conversation because you started off by saying certain things. And, and what I could see in the entire talk was, all those things that you started off by saying, you know, vulnerability, you know, uh, about about revealing yourself, about about not judging yourself and not allowing others to judge yourself, for all that were came in through the conversation and through the answers that you gave seamlessly, and and it's it's difficult sometimes for for a few people to walk their talk, but it was so easy for you to walk your talk, and I and and that's what made this discussion very interesting. Uh, Navdeep, uh, the whole translation bit, I found it very interesting because uh, I, I was once with Gulzar Saab and, and he had translated uh, the whole, uh, whole, whole work of uh, Ravindranath uh, Tagore. And, and somebody asked him that it took you four and a half years to translate. And he says, look, translation is much more difficult than actually writing because not only you have to go through the material that's written, you have also have to go through the journey of the writer to understand what did he want to convey. And while you are translating, it's not the language that is important. It's important to convey the viewpoint of the person who's written the original piece. And that's what makes the difference. And I think in today's session, we could kind of go through various aspects. And then that's why I said that, you know, if it goes on for another two hours, I don't think any of our participants will drop off uh, saying that, you know, it was meant to be one and a half hour session. Uh, we can go on and on. It was such a great session. Thank you very much, uh, Navdeep and Shekhar, both of you, for making this session such an intriguing one. Uh, I, I, I'm taking back a lot of learnings. I've not written four pages for any session, and I've actually end, ended up writing nearly four pages. Uh, so, so much of learning, and, and I, I hope uh, we at Fiki would be able to come back again and take this session forward from where we are leaving it. And that also is the point uh, you made, Shekhar, uh, that every story, when you leave it at a particular point, it starts, another story starts from there. And, and if we see today's, you know, we are coming from publishing industry. If I see today's writing, you know, everybody's writing trilogies and, and, you know, 
and after the trilogy is finished they come back with prequels and sequels and that's exactly what you said and and that's what is making in making making reading more interesting and i hope we all read we all continue reading now deep you started off by saying that you know if you want to do do creative writing if you want to be good at writing reading is where you start from and that's what we've been talking about and i will leave on that quote that which says if you don't read you are no different than a person who cannot read and mm. thank you very much all of you it was a brilliant session uh, i would i i i i would now it's a task on us we have to take this session forward it cannot end here it has to be beginning of a new session with both of you thank you very much thank you thank you thank you, thank thank you, you. very much thank you